The sunflowers have been blooming all over my garden and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to bring you guys along as I decide to harvest some of these to make some big bouquets and also show you guys how to grow lots of sunflowers from seed all the way to harvest. There are so many benefits to growing sunflowers. I recommend them to all gardeners because they are extremely useful beyond just being a pretty flower in the garden. For one, they attract loads of pollinators. They are especially attracted to the bright yellow blooms of sunflowers. Bees also love the pollen-rich centers of these sunflowers. If you want to plant them specifically to attract the pollinators, though, be careful what kind of sunflower variety you choose. There's lots of cultivars that are pollenless. Usually they're hybrid types of um, sunflowers. They were bred to be pollenless because whenever you make bouquets with them, you will notice like lots of pollen will fall out. And that can be problematic for like florists and other people in the flower industry. But for the home backyard garden, it's perfectly fine to grow the normal ones, which typically tend to be heirloom varieties. So that means you can also save your own seed. They also attract a lot of beneficial insects to the garden, like ladybugs, lace wings, and parasitic wasps. If you're trying to create a butterfly garden, it's actually recommended to try and plant as many large, flat flowers as possible. It's easier for them to land on these types of flowers. Another reason why you should be growing lots of sunflowers is because they are a trap crop for stink bugs or squash bugs. It's actually so effective at trapping these bugs that it's used on a commercial basis on farms to help control the situation. Oftentimes when I'm walking around my garden, I will find stink bugs and stuff congregating on the sunflowers, but these are really thick stems and sturdy flowers. And I find that they don't do like damage to them. If you want them for cut flowers or something like that, the flowers will still remain. They like to try and suck the juices out of the stems, but these are really thick, sturdy stems. So again, I don't notice them like taking down my sunflower plants. But it's really helpful because I get tons of stink bugs and squash bugs on my tomato plants. They like to pierce the skins of the tomatoes that are ripening up on the vine and suck the juices out of them. So I always try to plant some flowers nearby where my tomatoes are growing to help control the situation a little bit better. Another reason why you should grow a lot of sunflowers is because they produce lots of seeds. These seeds are a high protein source and are edible to both humans and animals. This particular variety is called mammoth and this head is like bigger than my head and it's loaded with hundreds of seeds. I can choose to eat these myself or I can cut the heads off and feed it to my chickens. This is so heavy that it's causing the whole plant to like bend over. But I do notice a lot of birds will land on the stems and then they will peck out the seeds. Therefore, sunflowers are a great choice for attracting wildlife and feeding the birds. So let's discuss cultivar selection because the first thing you need to do is go buy some seeds. Sunflowers are an annual and I never buy annual flowers from the nursery because they are so easy to start from seed and typically bloom within three months of sowing the seeds. You will notice that there's a lot of differences between height across the cultivars. Some can get as tall as 15 feet, like these mammoth sunflowers, which is a great option if you want to grow large edible seeds. Some get around six to seven feet tall, like these Henry Wild sunflowers or these Lemon Queen sunflowers. And there are dwarf varieties that are better suited for smaller gardens or container gardening. And if you think that you don't have enough space to grow the really tall varieties, I have successfully grown them in containers and grow bags. Sunflower plants in general are really tall, but they're thin so they don't occupy a lot of horizontal space. You can most likely fit them in small areas. Some cultivars are single stem or multi-branching. Single stem varieties produce one big flower at the very top of the stem, and they tend to be very large, heavy flowers. The weight of the flower can cause the stem to bend over. It's a great choice for cut flowers though, since you want long stems. The multi-branching cultivars, like this Lemon Queen here, produce several blooms all across the main stem. Since this plant has multiple flowers, they also tend to be smaller than the bigger single stem varieties. Sunflowers also come in a wide range of colors. Traditionally, they are yellow, but you can find dark red ones like this chocolate cherry variety, up to lighter cream colored flowers like this lemon queen, to even white. Some are a mix of colors like yellow with bronze or red like the autumn beauty mix. Some cultivars are also better than others if your primary goal is to grow seeds for eating. The larger, taller cultivars like the mammoth sunflowers will produce the bigger seeds. The smaller cultivars like under 10 feet tall have much smaller seeds and in my opinion are not worth eating for human consumption, 
but it's still good for birds and chickens. If you need seeds, I do have a bunch on my website and it's for these same varieties and cultivars that I grow in my garden and that do very well. Now let's find the perfect site to grow your sunflowers. Pick a spot that gets a solid eight hours of sunlight. They really love full sun. They will grow awesome in soils that are heavy in organic matter, but they also grow great in poor soils with no amendments, like my native Florida sandy soil. Sunflowers are native to the United States, so they tolerate a wide range of soil types. They need a consistent supply of water, but are pretty drought tolerant as well. Don't plant them in an area that gets flooded or that has poor drainage because they will succumb to root rot. Some of the taller cultivars might fall over due to the weight of the flowers or maybe pushed down by the wind. So it's a good idea to plant them up against a fence or a trellis like I have here. I do have to caution you on one thing when it comes to growing sunflowers. Sunflowers are aliopathic, which means they give off toxins from all of the parts of their flowers, from the roots, the leaves, the stems, everything. These toxins impede the growth of other surrounding plants or can even kill them. So grow your sunflowers nearby your vegetable crops, but not right next to them like grow them along the fence or borders surrounding the garden. All of these sunflowers back here that you see reseeded themselves and they fell around and in between my vegetable crops. I decided to just leave them and so far I have not noticed any effect on the nearby vegetable crops, but it can happen. The toxins will decompose or wash away with rain after a season or so. So it's not permanent. I'm gonna guess that I have not had a problem with these growing very close to my vegetable crops because I'm in Florida and it rains like a monsoon here every day during the summer and the heat helps things to decompose very quickly. If you have experienced this effect in your garden where you felt the sunflowers impeded growth, please comment below. So now that you have your seeds in a site picked out to grow your sunflowers, let's discuss when to sow the seeds. In general, you're gonna direct sow seeds as soon as your last average spring frost date has passed. This works for everybody. The taller cultivars, like over six feet tall, should be planted one foot apart. Their root systems need some space. Overcrowding will cause them to not grow as tall. The smaller dwarf varieties can be planted closer together at around eight inches apart. To direct sow the seeds, you're going to make a hole about one inch deep and plant one seed in that hole. Keep the area nice and moist so that way it'll germinate quickly. I like to succession sow my sunflowers and keep them blooming all summer long. As soon as I see blooms appear on the first set that I planted, I will start direct sowing more seeds. Now let's say you're experiencing poor germination when you direct sow the seeds. Maybe the soil is too cold or wet or critters are digging the seeds out, which has happened to me many times. Or maybe you just want to get an early start on your sunflower season. You can sow seeds in containers. There is a very important fact you need to be aware of though when sowing sunflower seeds in containers. Sunflowers have a large taproot and in general, root systems that cannot be disturbed when transplanted or it will stunt plant growth. They also get stunted in growth if they get root bound while growing in a small container. This is most obvious when you're trying to grow like the very tall varieties and they don't get as tall as you expected. To prevent this, to sow seeds in a bigger container to begin with, I recommend at minimum a four inch or six inch container so the roots have space to expand. Also make sure to transplant at around the four to six week mark. Check the bottom of the container. If you see roots, pull up the plant to check how developed the root system is and transplant it before it gets root bound. If you wanna get an early start on sunflowers, plant them indoors because it's probably too cold outside about four to six weeks before your last average spring frost date. To transplant, dig a hole, sprinkle in some granular fertilizer. This will help give the seedlings a boost or a head start. Pop your seedling in there, cover with soil and keep it nice and moist. Now that they're growing in your garden, let's discuss plant care. Make sure that you monitor the seedlings to make sure they have enough water. But once the plants are mature, they can handle short periods of drought. They don't really require much in terms of fertilizer, but if you do give it some fertilizer, especially the taller cultivars, it really helps them get even bigger and taller. <laughs> Quite honestly, I just throw down some organic granular fertilizer every now and then as I'm walking around my garden, maybe once every two to three weeks. As far as pruning, there really is no need to prune anything off these plants 
unless maybe you're seeing a lot of heavily diseased leaves. Like this one, for example. This is just a host now for whatever the pathogen is that's causing the blight, the rust, whatever. So it's a good idea to remove it from the plant. It will help slow down the progression of the disease. And sunflowers are really tough plants and not a lot of pests bother them. The pests would have to be in large numbers to really do some damage. Monitor the seedlings because they are the most susceptible to pests like cutworms, sunflower beetles, and sunflower moths. The moths can be a tough issue because they lay eggs and then the larvae start munching on the leaves and the flower heads. In those cases, I recommend that you spray with some BT, which is an effective organic treatment for any soft bodied chewing insects. I'll put an Amazon link in the description below to the same exact BT spray I use in my garden. Also be advised that small rodents and animals like deer can be very destructive and eat up plants quickly. I'm lucky to not have this issue because my garden is fenced in and I'm in the middle of a housing development. So I don't have very many critters or animals to deal with, but I know that that is not the case with a lot of other gardeners. As far as leaf diseases, most commonly you'll see like powdery mildew or yellowing spots due to blight especially in high humidity situations like here in my Florida garden. To treat all leaf diseases, I spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. But don't fret too much when you see like the pests or the diseases. To be honest, sunflowers are not long-lived plants. Their life cycle is done in about four to five months, so I don't even treat for anything. I have not had an issue so severe that it took out my sunflowers before they were done with their life cycle anyways. In about three months, your sunflowers should be in full bloom. If you want to harvest the seeds, allow the heads to completely dry out on the plants. Here's the big head from the mammoth sunflower that I showed earlier. To harvest the seeds, make sure you wear gloves because this stuff is really pokey. There's like a first layer of like this fuzz. You're just going to rub all that off to reveal the seeds underneath. Look at all of those seeds. You can continue rubbing out all of these seeds. They just pop right out when they're nice and dry. Sometimes I like to use a spoon or a fork to kind of scrape them out too. Usually I leave the flowers to remain blooming in my garden because the beneficials love them so much. But right now I have such an abundance of sunflowers in my garden that I decided to harvest some of them for my own enjoyment as a bouquet. I like to cut the stems with some scissors because they could be really tough. For a good bouquet, you definitely want to have a nice long stem. This is a multi-branching cultivar and it still has a lot of blooms that haven't opened yet. So I'm just gonna select a few that are blooming right now and that have long stems. This lemon queen one had so many flowers, it's heavy and it just bent over. But it still had a ton of flowers that are great for my bouquet. Look at this one, it's so pretty. This variety is called Red Sun. The blooms are mixed in color though. They can be dark coppery red like this one. They can be lighter golden yellow or even like a burnt orange with some gold fringe on it. These sunflowers are so gorgeous. And they make me so happy every time I look at them. If you have a favorite sunflower cultivar, please comment below. You'll give me some ideas for sunflowers to grow next season. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I post information about how to garden and grow food on a daily basis. Plus, those things really motivate me to create more gardening videos just like this one. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.